Go. Two, three, four. Oh, damn it. I don't know how he's doing it. This is slope style mountain biking. The freestyle side of the sport that has pushed the creativity and the technicality of mountain bike tricks so far since the first competition less than two decades ago. Trick variations and combinations have become ever more complex, but perhaps the craziest progression has been in rotations, where riders can now spin round not just once, not twice, not even three times, but as many as four full rotations as they fly through the air. Driving in, going the 1440, and he lands it! How does he do it? Okay, the first full rotation, the 360. This trick is a classic and can pretty much be pulled anywhere, wherever you want, flat ground, on a jump. And to be honest, it's one of my absolute personal favorite tricks. So to walk us through it, we're here with one of the biggest talents in slopestyle right now. He never seems to be rattled. World Tour slopestyle champion, Emil Johansson. The future is now. Emil, how's it going, man? Pretty good. Nice. We need to give people the knowledge and the wisdom of how to get all the way to a 1440. So I think they need to decide straight away, before they do anything, which way they're going to spin. Yeah. What's that's... your advice for that? I guess it all comes down to personal preference. Like a lot of people, before they start riding, before they even thought about it, I don't know if they ever like done a 360 into water or whatever, they just spin, can't even think about yeah. either way they spin. But usually when it comes to mountain biking, most people tend to spin towards their rear foot. Yeah. You ride with your right foot forward, right? Yes. Right, right, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So it makes more sense, like the orthodox way of you doing a 360 is left. Yeah. Because it's towards your back foot. Yeah. If I would spin this way, it would mean that I would need to spin over my front foot, which means that my chest is pointing the wrong direction yeah. towards my head or compared to my head. But if I spin this way, I have my whole chest open up and I could spot the landing earlier. Yeah. I often tell people to look at their back wheel. Yeah. So if you're gonna spin left, look over your shoulder at your wheel. If you're yeah. gonna spin right, look over your shoulder and keep staring at your back wheel until you land pretty much. To actually generate that rotation, it's all about turning up the takeoff or do you think it all happens once you leave the ramp and you're in the air? Uh, the momentum in your body starts in the lip, but you should not turn off the lip because you turn off the lip, you miss the landing. We use the term carve. So you carve, you actually carve up the takeoff it helps to come in at one angle and then almost correct yourself. So you don't want to turn off the lip. Yeah. And what Emil means by that is ride off the corner of the jump into the bush, river, whatever's next to you. And then you try to land it. Perfect. Right, you're spinning left, I'm spinning right. Yes. Should we do a little train? Yes. Come on then, let's do it. <laughs> I love that trick. What do you think of that? You can 360 something very small, can't you? Yeah. So sure. do you think you could do a 360 on that very small roller right there? Basically, there's best. no takeoff, yeah. there's no ramp. You're going to have to generate this spin. All right. So you're going to have to think about all the stuff we've talked about, yeah. all of those key ingredients, if you're going to land this trick Leading right now. The lift. Here we go. Let's see what I could do. Which way should I go? From there? Or I from don't there? know. That's your problem. Yeah, okay, I start over there. All right, Looks Neil. better, I think. Oh, this is huge. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's see it. Wow. Wow. Well wow. done, mate. Thanks for the lesson. And sure. that was a 360. Yeah. Well, we're thinking about two full rotations now, yeah. which is the 720. So you have now landed a 360, what's next? Well, you have to double the rotations. You need to go all the way up to a 720. And that has become a pretty popular trick in recent years with riders adding in their own combinations and their own variations like bar spins, tail whips, no handers, and of course, opposite rotations, spinning the opposite way to which you normally and naturally would. How are we going to get the 720 to work? 
but you're going to need to be extremely confident with your 360. Confident enough to hit a bigger jump with twice the air time and spin twice as fast. And that's no easy feat. It's not as simple as just carving harder or spinning harder, even though that's necessary. In fact, there's really key body positions that are going to help you spin faster. Like you see with gymnasts and high divers, they straighten out their body and that allows you to spin quicker. Straight lines spin a lot quicker than big loose objects. So where a 360, the comfortable position might be to be nicely tucked up, arms and legs bent. A 720 is completely different. You need to be have your hips on the handlebars with your arms and legs as straight as you can make them and twist your body all the way around. I can talk to you like this in the 720 position. <laughs> so a 720, you need to spin extra hard, but I think it's extremely important in where you look. So I look at the ground and then I actually look up to the sky for the second half of the rotation, the second 360. And for some reason, that just keeps me upright so that when I come round to land, I feel like I know where I am. I've spotted the landing and it just works. And that's about it. If you can do a 720, you're halfway there to breaking world records of rotations. And then we're looking forward to a 1080. The 1080, nicknamed the Twister. Now this is where it starts getting really difficult. On the Crankworx World Tour, the top tier event in slopestyle mountain biking, only three people have ever landed the 1080 in competition. So the latest addition to that elite group is David Godziak, who took the 1080 to the next level in competition. He took his hands off the handlebars. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> the front court 1080 no Come on! So David, are you crazy? Uh, no. <laughs> you must be crazy. Uh, I'm just spinning like crazy, but I'm not. Yeah, 1080 is a big trick. Like, how did you get that leap, that extra rotation? Mm. Uh, actually, I just uh, I've seen Nikolai doing 1080. Okay. Uh, like the twister. So I asked him how, how to do it, and he told me. He told you. I was riding BMX, so he told me. You weren't a competitor at that time. Yeah. And now we're here at Crankworks, and you're head to head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twisters everywhere. So when you're spinning around that fast. The obvious thing in my head is how do you know where you are in the air? How do you spot your landing? It's hard to say, but uh, after first spin, I think I can see the landing right here. Under your armpit? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the landing all the time, so I know if I, will, I, I need to spin faster. Or not. Yeah, it's amazing. What do you think it is about mountain bikes that makes these crazy rotations harder than on BMX? They're bigger, they're heavier, yeah. and the big wheels, the big wheels spinning, they don't want to rotate like a BMX does, yeah, right? Yeah, so you need a bigger jump and uh, like harder muscles. Just the, the full core package. Yeah. So yeah, it's exciting. You've got twisters, you've got 1080s, you've got the twister no-hander. And it sounds like you're pretty close to the 1440. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Maybe that's you're going to be the second rider to ever land one on a mountain bike. Less than 24 hours ago, he landed a 1440. Can he do it for the first time in a slope style run? So, Nikolai, the 1440, you landed it for the first time ever at Red Bull District Ride in 2017. How did that feel? Man, that felt absolutely insane. I had the twister like pretty dialed in, and then they just gave us that absolutely ridiculously massive step up jump at District Ride. With the crowd there, I just had to send it, and somehow it worked. Put the extra rotation in there, and uh, incredible feeling. So stoked. He's dropping in. All the speed he can muster out of that row in the 1440. Front court, 1440. So four full rotations. How do you even begin to know where you are in the air? Man, if I'm honest with you, I carve so hard and spin so hard off the lip that I actually don't see really where I am until I come out in, into that last bit. So when I go yeah. off, I actually count one, two, three, and then I open then up. Then, then I see that little bit at the end. 
That's I can't insane. see anything. Everything's just a big blur. But if you count, you got the feeling. So you count the first 1080. You don't see anything. You're blind. You're just counting. Fully blind. Fully insane. blur. Fully like a roller coaster blurry ride. <laughs> You've tried it once before in a Crankworks event, Rotorua 2018. What sort of jump do you think it takes? Because obviously you came up a little bit short there. But what, what sort of Crankworks feature, what jump are you actually going to need to land that in an event? Man, I think that jump at Rotorua is almost perfect. I just needed a bit more step up. Okay. Because, you know, when you have a lot of time going up on that trick, yeah. then you can come down and control the landing at the end. But when yeah. it's more of a double, there's so much rotational force coming out of it that it's really hard to control that last bit and put the wheels down after four full yeah, rotations. Yeah. So I can't even imagine. Um, basically, a last big money booter, mellow lip but tall, and step up. There's the dream for the 1440. It's huge air time. Huge air time. That's what's necessary. But do you know how long you actually need in the air to do a 1440? Man, no idea. It feels feels like ages, feels like 10 seconds in the air, it feels really? like everything. I mean, it's so really? fast, it all slows but down. it's such a big jump and such a big air time when it does happen that it just feels like, it feels like forever in the, in the air. What if I told you that a district ride in 2017, you had only two seconds of air time to do four full rotations? Four. That's all you had? <laughs> That's like, can you imagine trying to do that on the ground now? Ready? No. All right, ready? 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 Three. Two, one, go. One, two, three, four. 2.65. Oh. Go. Two, three, four. Oh, oh. How do you think he did? Uh, I, th I think he was like a 2.1. 2.5. Oh, 2.5. <laughs> oh, damn it. I don't know how he's doing it. There's no way you can go faster than that. Oh my god, I feel sick. Why would anyone ever want to do that though? I'm putting my helmet and goggles on for this one. <laughs> go. <laughs> How did I do? <laughs> you were like a 3.8. 3.8? <laughs> You would, you would probably need the biggest jump I in this whole world. I need a huge work. jump. Almost had it. But you actually spin faster than that <laughs> on your bike than you could even do in a car park. That's crazy. I guess it's the rotational force off the lip, the heinous car. Horrible That car. gets me that extra 0.6 that I need. So yeah, it's not even possible oh. without a bike. And yet, on a bike, you're the only guy in the world that can do but it. But man, I'm dizzy after that one. And after a real one, I'm not dizzy. My brain literally can't process how fast it happens. Like right there, I was like, processing four rotations, but in the air, it's just kind of like happens, so you it's don't feel the dizziness. Hectic. Obviously, we're at Red Bull Joyride. This is Crankworx Whistler. Are we going to see the 1440 right here at this slope style contest? Oh, man, I can't give that away. It's obviously the ultimate it crowd the ultimate. pleaser, the ultimate big move. So I'm obviously hoping to bring it out, but- Could you, uh, could you do it? I think it's possible, okay. but I also thought it was possible in Rotorua, and that was a big slam. It was. So I'm obviously trying to bring it out if I feel the confidence and if I need it to win on the day, then uh, it's gonna be sent. So Amazing. hopefully soon. Thanks. Cheers, dog. All right, look at this. This is what Red Bull Jorah is all about. We call this the Super Bowl in slope style for a good reason. Without further ado, let's get this on. What? Front flip on the start drop, changing his boot there with a 360 tail whip. The huge Jeez. Torque 720. Straight down the middle with a twist up. <laughs> huge twister. <laughs> what will it be on the dirt feature? 80 twist. Yes. Oh my gosh. The perseverance, the showmanship. This is amazing. Emil Johansson has won Red Bull Joyride 2019. Well, there you have it. We didn't see the 1440 at this year's Red Bull Joyride, but the trick is still out there, and I'm sure we're going to see it soon. In fact, we might even see it from one of you watchers at home spinning four full rotations. If you're keen to check out more cool bike content, then you can check out Red Bull Bike's YouTube channel and my personal YouTube channel, Matt Jones, for way more awesome mountain bike videos. Thank you, everyone. Legends.